Hey everyone, today I'm going to be testing Runways Act 1 to see how it compares to some of the work I've done using Life Portrait. If you're not familiar, Runway Act 1 allows you to act out facial expressions and mouth movements and transfer those actions onto an image. More recently, it's added a support for using video references. This means you can now add your own moving videos and overlay the facial expressions and movements, which is definitely useful for creating more dynamic content. Some of you might remember the tutorial I made about my Kanye West video where I lip synced lyrics from his song and transferred those facial expressions onto a toy version of Kanye. While Life Portrait is amazing, Act 1 seems to produce even better results and it's much easier to use too. So we're going to take a closer look at how Act 1 performs with some of the other videos I've made. There might be a couple reasons why you might want to use either Life Portrait or Act 1. Life Portrait is free and open source, while Runway Act 1 requires a paid subscription. I've already made a video about how to use Life Portrait, so if you're interested in learning more about it, check out that tutorial. There should be a link above. With Life Portrait, I always had to keep my head still to get the best results. Too much head movement caused the animation to go off the rails. In contrast, Act 1 lets you move your head freely, but it does ask you to keep your body still. I will say that it doesn't follow your head movements 100%. If you turn your head completely to the side, the output might only turn halfway, but the fact that it tracks movements without strange warping is really impressive. I've talked about my process for creating videos like this in my Life Portrait tutorial, but today I'm gonna expand on that and show you how to get even better results using the Flux model in Forge. Forge is a modified version of Automatic 11.11, essentially an image generator. It's supposedly faster than Automatic 11.11. While I haven't used it for a while, I'm sure there's data online to support that. To learn about the necessary specifications, you can skip ahead to the part of the video covering system requirements or installation options. For this video, I'll be using Forge instead of Comfy UI. Both are great tools and you're welcome to stick with Comfy UI if you prefer it. I just really like Forge's UI for in-painting. I'm also using a Laura model I trained of Bad Bunny, the singer, using foul.ai. Laura's are specialized lightweight models used to fine tune large AI models, enabling them to generate specific characters, styles, or other custom outputs with greater accuracy. Training LoRa's with foul.ai is straightforward and surprisingly fast. There are other free methods for training LoRa's, which I might cover in a separate video someday. If you're eager to learn, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube, or you can explore civitai.com, which has a large collection of downloadable LoRa's. But you don't always need a LoRa. Flux is already trained with a lot of famous characters, celebrities, and styles, but you won't find everything in it. Like if I type in Bad Bunny, this is what I get. Of course, the words Bad Bunny are very generic. To use Forge and Flux locally, you'll need an NVIDIA GPU with a certain amount of VRAM. Some Flux models require a lot of VRAM, but newer versions have been optimized for lower VRAM requirements. For example, Flux Dev NF4 optimized for lower VRAM usage and can run on GPUs with as little as 6 to 8 gigabytes of VRAM. However, performance may be slower compared to setups with higher VRAM. Flux Dev FP8 requires around 12 to 16 gigabytes of VRAM for optimal performance. While it might run on GPUs with slightly less VRAM, this may result in slower performance or the need for additional optimizations. For Flux Schnell, which is a lower quality model but still effective, you'll generally need about 8 to 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Keep in mind that these numbers aren't absolute, as users frequently find ways to run models on varying VRAM sizes. You'll need to test these models on your own system to see how they perform for you. As for Max, I don't own one and can't comment on performance directly. However, if you have an Apple Silicon, this guide provides instructions on how to install Forge on Max. Link will be in the description. If you don't have access to a GPU, you can use services like ThinkFusion, which allows you to rent or use GPUs remotely. This service offers pricing based on the amount of VRAM you need, so you can choose the option that best fits your requirements and budget. So let's learn how to install Forge. It's very easy actually. Just come to this page, I will put the link in the description. Scroll down to this part where it says one click installation package and download the file and save it in a folder on your drive. To unzip the file, you'll need software like 7-Zip or WinRAR. Make sure you have one of these installed, then unzip the downloaded file. Open the unzip folder and double click on the update.bat file. Once the update is complete, click on run.bat to install everything. Now all you gotta do is download the Flux model. I recommend the dev version, either FP8 or NF4. Schnell is also a good option for lower VRAM. With it, you can drastically reduce the steps to generate the images way faster and still generates high quality images. Save the model file and place it in the following folder. Just note, if Forge is still running after you added the model, make sure to click on this icon to refresh your checkpoint list. It should then appear in the list of available models. Just know that the first generation will take longer because it takes time for the model to load. After that, generations should be faster. So this is how I get started with Forge. I click on the Flux tab, 
for a default setup optimized for flux generations. I want to adjust the resolution to a 16 by 9 wide aspect ratio. Now in the prompt here, I'm going to load in the Bad Bunny Laura. And I'm also going to put in this classic toy Laura that I found on Civitai. For the prompt, I went into Claude.ai and asked it for some ideas. And since at the moment of this recording, it's the holidays, I asked it for some Christmas themed ideas. I also asked it to include words that would trigger the Laura model. And I paste that into the prompt. And now I press generate. This looks pretty good, but this person does not look like Bad Bunny. This is a common issue when the subject is too far from the camera, resulting in lower face quality. To fix this, I'm gonna use Forge's inpainting feature. Once you finish generating the image, all you gotta do is click on this little paint palette icon, and it's gonna bring you here. From here, you can draw on the area you want to inpaint. In this example, I'm going to inpaint his face. And I'm also going to come down here where it says inpaint area and I'm going to select only masked. Whatever resolution you have here is what's going to be generated within that masked area, which is going to help a lot with adding detail to the face. I did change the prompt to focus on describing the subject's face and including trigger words for the Laura. And let's try generating this now. And there you go. It does definitely look a lot more like Bad Bunny. Let's actually compare them to see how different they look. Big, big difference, right? Another thing you can play around with is the denoising strength. Lower values preserve the original details while higher values result in more changes. Just don't push it too far or you get strange results like this. Now you could use this single image and add the facial animations using act one, but it's better to try to get some motion in there to make it feel a little bit more alive. So I'm gonna use Runway's image to video, but you can use whatever image to video generator you want. I upload the image we just generated and I type in some basic prompts and then generate. All right, this doesn't look too bad. Okay, well, that part doesn't look right. His arms are extending outside of the snow globe, but let's just roll with it. Runway also has this cool new feature that lets you choose camera trajectory. You click on this little camera and it gives you a bunch of parameters here. And if you move these around, you can kind of get an idea of how the camera is going to be moving. Like it gives you some visualizers. Move it this way, that way, panning like this, like that, tilting. Like zooming in, zooming out. Just for fun, let's try something. Let's try a pan. You can't push it too much because then it just doesn't look right. And then we're gonna zoom out. So as you can see, it's not perfect, but it is trying to follow what I asked it to do. So that's just another option. Now I'm gonna go into the act one section and upload a video of me doing a lot of head and mouth movements. And after I will add my Bad Bunny video. Once they are both loaded, I'm going to generate. Just a piece of advice. If your clip has copyrighted music, it's probably gonna get flagged. So I would just upload the clip without any audio and then add the audio back and then editing software. And after some time, this is what we get. It looks really good. I don't know why there's a piece of a Santa hat on the back of his head. Is that in the original video? Oh yeah, it is. I totally missed that. Okay, let's do another quick test using another clip I generated. Let's use this one. Okay, that looks way cooler. It might have been a mistake to have him wear glasses because it seems like it's doing something weird with the eyes. But I think it's because of the sunglasses. What I really like about Act 1 is that it really does make it feel a lot more alive. Because before with Live Portrait, I was very limited with the head movement. And now you can move your head so much more. And adding those extra elements like the image to video really makes this come alive. I'm really impressed with how easy this process has become and also with the results Runway gives. I think where we're at right now with this, we can definitely use this for professional looking music videos. And for me, what I love about this is that although you don't have complete control, giving you the ability to add your own face expressions and head movements, it's a really big step for getting those ideas that you have in your mind come to life. Every day, these tools are allowing us to have more and more control over the output. And that's exciting. We're living in some exciting times for sure. So give it a try for yourself and let me know what you think. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching and like always, Take care, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.